Um, good afternoon, everyone in Vietnam, and good evening to, our, to Tom. And for those who are in Australia, uh, we um, today we start our uh, webinar number eight. The topic is experiment for beginners. Uh, it is the first time we will uh, use Telegram as our um, interpretation cabin. All right. So uh, we appreciate your efforts, your patience. All right, uh, so I don't want to say any more. Um, now I would like to invite Professor Tom Smith to start your presentation. Thank you, Thanks everyone. So okay, thank you, thank you. So let me, let me start. Um, what we're going to do today is a four-prong. Four we are going to motivate uh, why uh, experimental research has a, has a place in your uh, bag of research tools and talk about uh, best practice. Uh, we're gonna give you some examples of experimental research that's currently being carried out. Um, especially important for you as researchers, point out what the editors are looking for. Yeah? What, what particular uh, aspects of methodology are the editors looking for? And where can you go to? What sources can you go to uh, from here? Doc, do you want me to pause while that's interpreted? You're good. I can hear both sides, and I see that the interpreter is translating or interpreting, you know, at the same speed as you. So it's excellent. Okay, great. So, very important thing happened in 2002 when the Nobel Prize was awarded to these two gentlemen, Daniel Kahneman and Vernon Smith, right? And they got uh, the Nobel Prize in economics for experimental research, yeah. And after this happened, uh, experimental economics became very, uh, experimental methods became mainstream in the uh, economics and finance literature. Uh, it already had been mainstream in management. Uh, and there are other experimental Nobel Prizes, uh, people that were linked to doing experiments. Uh, you see there in 2012, 2009, and 2019. So why experiments? Uh, well, that's because if you go to do empirical work, right, that is outside the laboratory, you have this terrible trouble with endogeneity, right? So you don't know whether your independent variable X is causing uh, your dependent variable Y, or whether um, the dependent variable Y is causing the independent variable X. So it's very difficult uh, to tell. And so why experiments uh, have been embraced by researchers is that in laboratory during experiment, you can hold all else constant and just vary the exogenous uh, variable, just vary the X variable. And that helps to show whether the X is causing Y or not. So you can have a control group and you can have a treatment group yeah, in this uh, randomized control trial. And then that's what they do in medicine. They have a, you know, they want to try out a new medicine. So they have a control group yeah, and they have a treatment group. The control group is just given uh, medicine that's a, what they call a placebo, it has no effect. And the treatment group is given the real medicine. Yeah? So, but the people in the control, you know, the people in the different groups don't know whether they've received the placebo or whether they've received the real medicine. Yeah? And so then you can see whether giving the medicine versus not giving medicine actually changes the health outcome. Uh. 
So this is uh, what experiments do, right? They help you to establish uh, a cause and effect relationship. Yeah. So you're allowed, you're able to vary the independent variable. DX, I mean, right? so treatment I mean, or placebo. Yeah, treatment or placebo. So the experiments allow you to establish a a cause and effect relationship, right? Because you're able to vary the independent variable. So you know, you give uh, the control group the placebo and you give the treatment group the, the actual medicine, for example, the actual treatment, right? And that, that way you're able to see the effect, right? Because you are varying uh, the independent variable. Uh, and you're able to do that. Um, so the artificial setting of a laboratory allows you as a researcher to con conduct a randomized control group. So you're able to have a control group and a treatment group. And uh, it's not something you can really do uh, with empirical work, uh, at least not easily. Um, so we will talk about that um, next time when we talk about um, in, you know, a capital market research. So let's go uh, a little bit more deeper into uh, a randomized control trial. Right? So you have a population there on the left, and you've got to randomly divide uh, this population into two groups. Yep. One group, the one down the bottom, is a control group. Right? So these are people looking for work. Right? So in the control group where you actually do nothing, you see how many people end up finding work, and they're in the different colors. In the other group, you know, you do an intervention. You, know, you might give them some job training or some skills in writing a CV. And then you look at the number of people that find work. So to judge whether the intervention works, you look at the number of people that found work after the intervention versus the number that found work when nothing happened, when there was just a placebo, right? The control was no intervention, right? But you know, out of a uh, group, there will be some people who just randomly find work. So you can see where the intervention aided over and above what would have happened uh, naturally. So now, what about natural experiments where you go outside of the laboratory? Right? Say you wanted to know if strong institutions affect long run economic growth. Well, you can't assign strong institutions to one country and weak, bad institutions to another country and wait you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years to see what happens. Right? So that's why you do things in a laboratory. However, sometimes natural experiments arise, right? And that can happen uh, when a natural experiment uh, arises where they're sorted by nature into a control and uh, treatment group, for example, North and South Korea, uh, East and West Germany. So natural experiments, we'll be talking about next time I talk, right, when we talk about uh, econometrics yeah, and capital markets research. So going into the laboratory experiments, right, what we're talking about here with experiments, they are, you know, they're not real life. Yeah? They have very few uh, you know, variables, X variables, you have a high degree of control. Uh, it does cost you money to run experiments, but low cost cost compared to, uh, you know, giving strong institutions to one country and uh, weak institutions to another. So you can do it in a relatively short time and the, the subjects are aware that they're participating. In a natural experiment, of course, it's very real, but in the real world, there's lots of variables. Right. You have very little control. And of course, if you wanted to do such a thing, it would be very high cost, and it could be 20, 30, 40 years. And of course, the people themselves, uh, just citizens of the country, they're not aware uh, of the, that they're participating. So this is what uh, we'll talk about next time, the, the, the natural experiment. But for today, you know, we, we're focusing on the laboratory experiment because um, that's the one that gives you the most control.